How are you doing today, babe? Good. Yeah, it was wonderful weather today. Yeah. Oh my God. Like talk about a, a tale of two weeks. In Texas, it is, uh, what's today's day? Today, I think it's uh, March, uh, sorry, February the 28th. Today is the end of that February. Yeah, today's the last day in February. Uh, yesterday was my sister's birthday. Shout out to you, sis. Happy, Happy birthday. birthday, sister. And what a tale of two weeks. I'm talking about Texas uh, a week and a half ago when we were in a, a uh, I would say, a freeze, a snowstorm. Super cold. And it, it, it was not pleasant. In fact, we were without power <laughs> here in our Griffin household for almost three days oh, dealing that with that right lunacy. There. Without so, the internet. So I want to say a quick shout out to God. Thank you for electricity. Thank you. Thank you for heat in the home because those are things we take for granted. I know. Yeah. It's not fun when you don't have it. I can assure you of this. Mm -hmm. So anyway, what an amazing uh, honor we have today. We have a special guest that's going to be oh joining us on the show. It's a very special day. Yeah. And, and, and so many of you who know about the show, Drink You for Dummies, we got our logo shirts on, by the way. We got to have t-shirts very soon. Yeah. Our online store is under construction. Browse, it should be so ready in a in a couple days, so just stay tuned. Oh, it's, it's under construction as we speak. So, but anyway, long story short, when we first started this, 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 this idea that we call Drinking for Dummies, which was all Chica's idea, by the way. Yay, I she, get credit. She gets all the credit for that. Mm -hmm. She was like, babe, you should do a show about drinking. And, and because I was a podcaster and I was doing podcasting things, my natural response was, yeah, we'll start a podcast, which we did. And we called it Drinking for Dummies. And we went into studio and we were doing some fun stuff and we were sampling beverages and we were, you know, trying, like we've had a, an, an episode with the, the founder of Buzz Balls. Are you familiar with them? We had a, another episode with some good friends of ours from the Silver Star Distillery in Fort Worth, Texas. Uh, Kirk Richards Worth. came into studio with us and we did an amazing show with him. Awesome. Mm -hmm. That was great. But we realized one thing, it was audio only and man, this type of show really should be visual. Don't you agree? I really think so. Mm -hmm. I mean, because people need to see what, like, first off, what's going on. We need to see what the bottles look like. So when they decide they like it, they want to go shopping and buy said beverage. It's very easy to identify. But if you're listening to a podcast, it's very hard outside of hearing, you know, some, yeah. you hear some ice jingling around in a glass. That's not going to do it justice. So we decided to completely undo what we've done and relaunch Drinking for Dummies in a very special way. We're going to be getting rid of the podcast and we're launching where you're at and you're viewing right now as our new YouTube channel. I think you can you can enjoy more if you see it and yeah. Yeah, so it, behind us, the background that we're using, it's a virtual background, but you see this is downtown Fort Worth, Texas. Now, when we first moved to Texas, we weren't living in Plano where we live now, right, babe? Yes, we live in Fort Worth. It's called Bedford. Yeah, we lived in a little town called Bedford. And if you don't know, if you've never been there, it's a little small town in between Dallas and Fort Worth, right in the middle. And that's kind of how we ended up there. I didn't know the difference between Dallas and Fort Worth. So we just kind of picked somewhere in the middle and we moved to Bedford. A great little city. Uh, I loved it there. But I got to tell you, here in Dallas, Fort Worth, Texas, there is a little bit of a rift between the Dallas people and the Fort Worth people. Yeah, it's just kind of like a Los Angeles and a New York. Not really, because we're in the same city. Like, those guys are on the, the opposite ends of the country, darling. And so the short answer is no. It, it, it is, it's not the same. It's more of a, like a, a competition. See, the Dallas people have a different mindset than, say, the Fort Worth people. They hate each other. They yeah. agree. I wouldn't call it hate. I when would... we moved to the Prado, which is the Dallas side, people said, yeah. why you move there? They are horrible. Mm. Yeah. So there, know it. there's certainly a rift. And I can tell you now, having lived a couple years on one side, a couple years on the other side, I currently live in Plano. Uh, I have a confession to make. I G like both, you know, mm. different way, but I like more forwards because the people is more laid back, people is more friendly. Yeah. Yeah. So Here I, is more city, you know. And, and I'm not hating on Plano or Dallas. I think they're both great. But if yeah, I had great. my druthers and if I could choose where I live, which I'm getting ready to do that soon because we're going to be moving. I would choose the Fort Worth side of town. I'll just put it out there. It's my official vote. No offense, Dallas people. We love you very much. But people tend to be more friendly and more outgoing in Fort Worth than they are necessarily here on the Dallas side of town. That's just my opinion. I mean, like my neighbor in one side is very friendly. They say hi, hi, each other and talk like later. But the other side is <laughs> never fit. They never say hi. They never do it in no eye contact. And for mm -hmm. me, it's a weird. We live in Dixie each other. We know the face each other, but they don't say hi. 
Do you think it's a wrong? I think it's I awkward. Think it's wrong. I think it's awkward. Yeah. You know, and when I first moved to Texas, I was so impressed by this city and the state because people were so down to earth and so friendly. Because when we lived in Nevada, no one talked to you in Nevada unless Nobody. you were giving them money. Mm-hmm. It's the only time they would ever have a conversation with you. So anyway, consider this our new official episode, Drinking for Dummies. And we're going to be highlighting, I think, one of my favorite whiskeys I've ever had in my life. The one and only Silver Star Distillery is based out of Fort Worth. This is a new bottle. I just got it at Specs a couple days ago. And I immediately noticed when I went in there, because I remember the bottle that Kirk gave me a couple of years ago, or a year and a half ago, the label had changed. It also gave me some insight that maybe there's some things working on with the company. They have some new special things that are happening. So, man, we have a special guest, the president. I still can't believe we pulled this off. The president of Silver Star Distillery is going to be joining us live in this episode. So let me go ahead and uh, see what I can do to get my good friend. Ooh, Welcome back to the show. I, I am uh, going to ask him to unmute his microphone. So, Bob, if you can hear me, go ahead and unmute yourself. And then uh, okay. I want to welcome to the show my good friend. Oh, I'm sorry, I hit the wrong button there. Stand by this one. My good friend. So, Bob, forgive me if I say your name wrong. Is it Camel? How do you how do I pronounce your your name? Camelone would be appropriate. Camelone. So, Bob so when Cam- I fir- when I first saw it, I thought maybe you were Italian. Are you Italian? Yeah. Yes, I am Italian. Italian descent. My uh, grandparents cool. on both sides uh, are from Italy. Oh so, wow. Yes. Oh, that is so cool. So, so you know, obviously, Chica and I are real novices when it comes. Well, let me take a step back. Have you been drinking for thirty years? Does that make you a novice or a professional? <laughs> uh, well, I'm working on forty-four. I think Woo! I'm still a novice. <laughs> well, awesome. Well, hey, listen, I wanted I wanted the listeners. To, I didn't even want this episode to be about us because we're just uh, a goofy a, a goofy couple. We wanted to hear a little bit about your story. I know you've been in the industry for a long time. So, where did you start cutting your teeth in the alcohol business? Oh, gosh. Well, so I uh, hope we have a few minutes here. Uh, I, I started in uh, New York City, uh, Metro New York, covering uh, Metro uh, New York City and New Jersey with Suntory International, wow. uh, Japanese uh, spirits company. Yes, that's a huge company, big company. <laughs> yeah. Yes, Yes, it is. And, and at that time, uh, many years ago, they were worth $23 billion, but people around the U.S., did not really know about Japanese whiskey. And one of the things Suntory did to uh, enter the U.S. market was they created a product called Midori, mm. which is a uh, melon liqueur, and Midori means green. And, uh, you know, the Japanese taught me a few things that I'll never forget. One of the first jobs I've ever had, and that is plan your work and work your plan. And, uh, and if the plan doesn't work, then you look for that plan B. Well, they gave... Midori, a 10 year trial and said, if we're not at a hundred thousand cases in 10 years, uh, they're going to sell the marketing rights. So in 1988, uh, 10 years after I began with them, they did sell the marketing rights and uh, they sold the marketing rights to a company called Hiram Walker. And at the time, that company uh, uh, represented a brand called Maker's Mark. I was the only person in the United States to make the transfer over at uh, uh, Hiram Walker. And I got to find and sell many wonderful brands, uh, Cuddy Sark, Beef Feeder, uh, Tawaka Liqueur, Kahlua. Uh, but one of my favorites was when they had their called Maker's Mark. It did not take me long to, uh, within the new organization to become a Maker's Mark ambassador. I did that well into uh, the late eighties and uh, mid 90s say and then i uh left the corporate world because i'm a firm believer this is a people business and uh there's nothing better than being in front of a consumer a customer sampling product and telling the story and the romance about the story and oh so i left the corporate world and i I got involved with a product called 40 creek whiskey i was the only employee for the company i handled the u.s market and uh, we, I worked on that brand for about 10 years. And uh, we were fortunate enough to sell that brand to Campari, Grupo Campari, worldwide brand. And uh, fast forward from there, you know, last summer I was looking for something to do, uh, pretty much to get out of the house, a little too early to retire. And uh, I met Kurt Richards, who you spoke of earlier. And uh, 
Kurt was looking for a different set of eyes to help him at Silverstone. You know, he just, uh, they got a wonderful product. And sometimes he kind of gets stuck in a rut of maybe doing the same stuff. And the brand's done wonderful in the Fort Worth market, but you cannot become a, a national brand unless you really start selling across the country. So that's going to be my role as president of this company. But I got to tell you, yeah, that's uh, pretty much uh, the short of my story. Well, I, that's interesting. man, what, what heck of a resume. So I, I, we had the honor of meeting Kirk. This is like probably a year and a half ago. Mm -hmm. and, yeah, uh, I think it probably was. Yeah. yeah. He, he took the leap of faith. He trusted somebody he'd probably never met. I, I drove down there. We took a tour of the distillery. What an amazing right. building. And they were trying to tell me some of the history about the building and how it had started out as it, it was a, a bean factory. Is that, is that my understanding? Really? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. So, so, so we went from beans to whiskey, right? So it was, uh, <laughs> it was the home of, uh, it was the home of ranch style beans, which is still a product that's available across the United States uh, that happened to start here in, in Texas. But most people here in Fort Worth, but you know, th that's a that building means a lot to them. It's an iconic building. Mm -hmm. Many people have worked there. It employed many people and. Uh, it makes a wonderful distillery. So the cool thing is, is that they kept a lot of the artifacts, a lot of the uh, old signage is still in the building. Uh, the building is 94 years old. And wow. Uh, wow. they say there's ghosts in the building. I've never seen any ghosts, but I do know <laughs> there's a lot of spirit. So there's a lot of whiskey spirit in the building. That's, that's awesome. Spirit. And a great analogy there. Spirit, yeah. I might add. That was very yeah. clever of you. And Chica, how do we say ghosts in Japanese? Uh, yurei. I thought it was obake. What is obake? obake? Yeah, we have two different ways to mm. say that. Yeah, obake. Okay, so I'm going to hold up my most recent purchase, which is a Silver Star. So I went to uh, Specs recently because, for one, I ran out, so I needed another bottle. And if you have right. not had this yet, trust me, do yourself a favor. Uh, go to their website, which I will show it's you here in a second. So Find good. out where it can be bought and then go get yourself a bottle. It is phenomenal. And I've had a lot of whiskey in my years, and I have never had one as smooth as this. And I, I think it has a lot to do how they make it. Because if my understanding, correct me if I'm wrong, Bob, but they use rainwater. Is that yeah. rainwater? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's right. Yes. So, so, so all of our products, uh, you know, you typically distill products, whiskeys, you distill oh, under 160 proof, and vodka you would distill at 190 proof. But for vodka, for example, you would distill it at 190 proof, but you sell it at 80. Mm. So in order to get it to 80 proof, you have to cut it with water. And uh, most companies will use probably some type of tap water. We're very fortunate at Silver Star. We collect the water on our 30,000 square foot roof there at the distillery. Wow. And then we store it in tanks right outside the building. And then when it comes time to cutting, whether it's our vodka or a whiskey, we use that rainwater. We run that rainwater through a reverse osmosis filtration system. Just a fancy word for cleaning up the water. But if you think about it, you know, a tap water probably has chlorine in it. Yeah. For sure has chlorine. Right. Maybe some other things in it to make it palatable. Rainwater tends to be a little more natural. So it really makes a difference in the finished product. That's one thing that I noticed. By the way, I didn't realize that they distilled vodka at 190. So that stuff's coming yeah. off really hot. Oh, yeah. Very hard. Yes. Really, yes. Yeah. So I, that's one thing I, I've become a, I've become a student of the distilling world over the last year and a half. Once we started this little pet project, I have made my own batch of homemade fruit wine. I have done that. Oh. And, wow. and so, uh, yeah. And it's. Yeah, well, how would you how would you rate my first batch of wine, babe? Yeah. Yeah. It's a uh, wait Talk to here. see over here. Wait to see. Yeah. <laughs> She tried it and she was not that impressed. So, so Kirk, if you're listening, I could use some, I could use a couple tips on, on how to get it done correctly. So what what they're seeing right now, Bob, is I'm actually showing them some photos that, that came from your website. That's amazing. Uh, one okay. is showing your bottle line. That is showing how they are actually right. bottling. So how often are you guys running? Are you guys running yeah, 24 yeah. seven? Well, we, well, we are uh, for, for bottling purposes, but the mm -hmm. stills aren't running until oh, a couple of times a year when, when we're making batches of whiskey. One of the things I like to jump into is uh, uh, since I think you met with Kurt and probably uh, when you went to the distillery, I'm sure you visited our barrel room. 
um, when you were there. Was I on did, the second yes. Level. Yes, it was so okay. cool. Yes. And in that, in, in those barrels were uh, is a square bourbon, right? And um, one of the questions we're asked frequently is, what's the difference between whiskey and a bourbon? And we mm -hmm. live in Texas where they, they tend to drink a lot of Canadian whiskeys and mm -hmm. for some Texas whiskey is whiskey, but there is a difference. And all bourbon has to be minimum 50% corn and it has to be aged in brand new American white oak barrels. And uh, it has to be aged for a minimum of two years. Well, those barrels that you saw when you were there, uh, we pulled out, uh, we dumped those barrels, as we call it in our business, and um, we dumped them at about 142 proof, and then we cut it, cut, cut it to 90, and that was our first, or Kurt Richards' first uh, bourbon, and there was no name for it, and uh, we came up with the idea of naming it in honor of Fort Worth, so Fort Worth was uh, established in 1849, Hence the name of our new bourbon called 1849 bourbon. So uh, with that, uh, cheers and toast to everybody and, and to Fort Worth. So what you're seeing also, what you just held up is a little different than what you also saw when you were with Kurt. And that is one of the first things I noticed when we when I got on board was that, you know, there was great consumer franchise with the brand, but some of the labeling they had on the previous product were not very visible from the back bar. So if you're sitting at a bar and they had the silver star, you would see the big silver star, which is great. However, it wasn't iconic enough to be recognized as silver star whiskey or silver star vodka. So on all the products, and, and it's hard for me to see from here, but I believe you held them all up. We now have an open star on all our products and it, it's consistent across the board. And the whiskey you're holding up, that's the same wonderful whiskey that started this company. Um, that's a bourbon style whiskey. So what is the difference between that bourbon style whiskey and our 1849? The real key difference is the mash bill is very similar. It's mm -hmm. high corn content, uh, about 20% uh, rye and then nine to 10% barley. But the bourbon is in a brand new American white oak barrel, which it has to be by law to be bourbon. And, uh, and then the whiskey is, is in a seasoned barrel and the bourbon is uh, cut to 90 proof and the whiskey that you're holding up is cut to 80 proof. People mm -hmm. a, lot, a lot of times think we're a blended whiskey, but we're not, we're a bourbon style whiskey is what that is. Oh yeah, that's, yeah, I understand. Yes, I, we just, just try right now. By the way, we were yeah. not wasting any time. We just cracked that bottle, we poured ourselves yeah. a little sample and we still have these amazing glasses that Kirk gave us back in the day that has, still has right. the old logo on it. And, uh, but anyway, I'm gonna tell you, man, my, I've, I've tried many of whiskeys in my life and the, 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 the smoothness is just phenomenal. It's really good. And so I, I had a question for you for the bourbon or, or even for the whiskey itself. So you have these brand new oak barrels. Are you charring them on the inside as well? Or are they just uh, traditional oak barrels? Yes. They, they're char typically bourbon bar barrels are charred and they range from one to six or light to, to heavy. And we're using number three char, which basically is a medium charred barrel. And uh, the bourbon has uh, been sitting in there for 39 months. Wow. Uh, one of the things people notice is that our bourbon is a, is a lot darker and more vibrant in color than the whiskey. And that is, uh, you know, you just think about it this way. Uh, the first whiskey in the barrel, and both all whiskey is clear when it goes in the barrel, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the first whiskey that goes in that barrel is going to take advantage and, and have the benefits of all that wonderful char. Right. So that's going to tend to be the darkest. And then when you do your second run uh, and then it becomes a whiskey, it's just not going to pick up as much of that color, but the flavor, you're still going to get wonderful flavors out of that. So that was a that was a question I had. Like I said, I've been a student and I've been watching. <laughs> this is going to sound okay. so bad, but Chick and I are, have become addicted to this TV show called Moonshiners. Have you seen that right. on TV? <laughs> Yes, I've caught a couple episodes. <laughs> yeah, so, so here, this is a funny story. So when I was a young kid, I was I was uh, in in school and I was learning about Europe and history. And they were talking about the knights of the round table and i and i saw wow one of those knights had a griffin symbol on his <laughs> on his armor so i got okay. so excited i ran home to my father and i was like dad is it true 
that we used to be like my ancestors for some of the knights of the round table. And he looks at me and goes, son, I'm not trying to burst your bubble. He says, but uh, we come from a long line of broke moonshine runners in northern Tennessee. <laughs> so, short answer is no. But apparently running yeah. illegal liquor came in my lineage. So it makes sense that I would love bourbon and whiskey. Yes. Well, with a last name like Camelone, I think some of my ancestors may have been bootleggers as well, right? They needed somebody <laughs> to move this stuff around. You know, our, our industry has really a, a wonderful history in how it got started. And we all know about prohibition and people trying to stop people from uh, drinking. And it, it's, look, if it's enjoyed in moderation, it's, it's a wonderful product. And, you know, you, you talk about this bourbon and you're taking these classes, as you mentioned, you know, I remember when the bourbon category basically was Maker's Mark, you know, Jim Beam and then maybe Maker's Mark, which ironically are the same company now. But, wow. uh, oh, okay. you know, Jim, and Jim Beam was more of a moderately priced and Maker's was the premium bourbon at the time. And, we're, you know, I'm talking, you know, early 90s. Look at that category now. I, there, you know, the, the bourbon section is, is, is it's amazing. There's a, uh, in Texas, for example, uh, Gosh, in the early 2000s, there were four distilleries in the state, and it's over 116. So, wow. you know, Texas is really coming on strong as being the second uh, most noted market for making fine bourbons. So, so I, I, I didn't besides know that. Silver Star, what other products have you? Uh, do, do you drink Japanese whiskeys, uh, being oh. that you're Japanese descent? Like, like for me, I'm not a whiskey drinker, but I just okay. tried that. Silver Star, it is very mild. It's right. a little bit sweet. Just like you say, it looks like more bourbon, whiskey mm. style. You don't yes. want to mix anything. This is just drink on the straight or yes. putting some of the ice in it. But this yeah. is really good and compare and how much we got it, the price and the taste. Yes, yeah, yeah. really good. Yeah, so short answer to your question is I've had many of the Suntory whiskeys. When we go to Japan, they, okay. I, would, I would always order that what they call the highball. Highball. Is, how, do say, how do you say it? How do you say it, babe? Highball. Highball. That's how you say it. A lot of young young lady likes that. Actually. And then you could order like we would go to these little uh, uh, karaoke little places. You rent the little room and it includes it includes like all you can drink uh, liquor. And so I would oh, just wow. tell the lady like I need coke and a highball. The stuff, <laughs> but they would put all the garbage stuff in there. And that's one thing I noticed when I when I tried your product. Like I said, I went through college. I had all my young days trying everything from Jack. I'm a big fan of Makers. Uh, for those of you who are listening right now or watching the show, Makers is that bottle you all see in the liquor store that has the, the, red, the red wax melted on the top. That's how you know it's a, a bottle of Makers. So great iconic marketing piece they did there. But anyway... But my country is a lot of people, especially like uh, all the, all the it, whiskey is very popular in my country. It's almost the same as a beer. So mm. a lot of people are um, buying a lot of, you know, whiskey or uh, bourbon from the different country, mostly U.S. And this right. Texas, can we, can we sell to Japan or? Uh, yeah, let's take Silver Star to, to Japan, Bob. Can we do that? You know, I'm going to tell you. <laughs> I, I, mean, I love your optimism. Love but, mm -hmm. uh, yes, they would love it. And I think that because it is bourbon style, they would love it. And then they would also love our new bourbon. The, the, the challenge is we have to uh, build the brand. Uh, you have to build your backyard first, right? So uh, uh -huh. we have Fort Worth very well oh, under control. The next stop is, uh, you know, we're now in uh, Oklahoma, Arkansas, oh, soon wow. to be Kansas, Missouri, and oh. Uh, and then once things really open up on the East Coast, New York and New Jersey, and then once we once we get that type of uh, distribution around the country, then we would probably look at doing some exporting to Japan. Oh, I wanted to and help that. Yeah. <laughs> I will. I know who to call. I think I have an inside <laughs> connection. That's great. Yes. Yeah. So I got to tell you, man, I having tried many Aspiras, there are very few, like, so I'm, I'm just rewinding to my college days. I tried Makers for the first time and it felt like fire water. Sure. I've tried uh, some of the other bourbons and, uh, and, and if, if you're not used to drinking it, you're going to get a distinct bite. And uh, I, I never just, I never had that at all with the Silver Star whiskey that I have in front of me today. I can't wait to try the bourbon. Oh, oh yes. Yeah. I got to tell you, I, I, 
I'm anxious to get a bourbon in your hand. Um, you know, and as you know, we did this last minute, but uh, I we, we will get together real soon because very proud of the bourbon. Just like our whiskey, you know, I have an old philosophy and, and Kurt has it too. And, and that is whiskey should not bite back. You mm. know, if it's distilled correctly, aged correctly, uh, you know what, it, it should, look, you should feel the proof. You should see the, feel the heat, the difference between the 80 and the 90 proof, but it should not be harsh. And, and the challenge we have, uh, especially with a lot of young consumers, is they think that harsh is, is higher proof and they tend to think they're going to get a quicker buzz. But whiskey is meant to, to sip and enjoy and, mm. and whether you want it on the rocks or with a beverage, but it's it should be uh, flavorful enough to come through a mixed beverage, you know, through the cocktail uh, the, the through the cocktail, or it should be uh, nice to drink by itself. So, you know, one of the things about the building is uh, an area, a majority of the building is not climate controlled. So the, the bourbons that we're laying down at the, at the distillery is really liking, like you mentioned the weather last week, you know, we, we, we could have 110 degree heat index in Fort Worth and, and without the building being climate controlled, those barrels are really expanding and uh, extracting and, and the whiskey is really marrying very well. And then you have the cold weather like we had the last couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. So, you know, Texas is, uh, and then we're using smaller barrels. I think Kurt might have mentioned that before, you know, barrels come in 53 gallon and 30 gallon and we use them the 30 gallon. And uh, I think that uh, bourbons are really liking the Texas heat. And, and I think they, they tend to be uh, aging quicker. So although you have to be minimum two years, you don't have to go to six years on some of these bourbons being made in Texas because of the intense heat. And it's really marrying well with the, with the wood. Wow. Man, that's that's interesting. interesting. It does get hot here in Texas, folks. Yes. When yeah. I when I first my first summer here, and I, granted, I was I, I used to work in Las Vegas, and I I remember summers being 120 degrees, and yeah. then uh, they said, "Wait, it gets hot in Texas, go. It can't possibly be worse than than Vegas." But the humidity added into the heat in Texas when it gets you know uh, north of 100 degrees, it's a little hard to handle here in town. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yes, it is. And that's when you go to drinking a vodka and we <laughs> they have a vodka, vodka for you. That was a nice lead in, wasn't yeah. it? Uh, now, I got to tell you, and I think if you not, have not figured out, uh, I, I do not have a Texas accent. I was, uh, I tell people I'm a New Yorker by birth and a <laughs> proud one, but I am definitely a Texan by the grace of God. Uh, I, I do like the climate here. Yeah, although, you know, you can give me maybe four weeks of uh, 90 plus degree weather, I'll take that any day over some of the long winters they have back east, you know, mm. so. So that, I'm, I have a funny story for you, Bob. So I, yeah. when we went through the, the snow apocalypse we had here in Dallas, right? Right. So uh, Monday, Tuesday, we were without power. Finally, our power came back on, but because of work, I had to travel, I had to fly. Guess where I flew to? Jersey. So I flew into LaGuardia. I drove down to Princeton, New Jersey okay. uh, for work. And then the same snowstorm that had just hit us in Texas hit us in Jersey. Right. And, and so I had to drive from Princeton, New Jersey, back to LaGuardia in one of the most hellacious snowstorms I've ever been in my life. So let's just say it's a miracle that I'm still here and I'm still alive. I just want to put that out there. Oh, okay. we're, we're, we're all very happy that you're yeah. here. Yeah, that was one of the crazier <laughs> storms. But, but here's the thing. Uh, you know, we're not prepared for it in the South. And it's just like the... The North is not prepared for, you know, triple digit weather in August with no air conditioning. So, mm. um, you know, I guess we can do I don't want to get political. We, there could be improvements all around. But all in all, at the end of the day, the, they have a beautiful fall back east, which I, I miss that. And then we have beautiful springs that uh, start early. You know, we'll be in spring weather here in a couple of days. I mean, it's uh, yeah. today, for example, it's got to be close to 70 out there. I know. So. It's crazy. But you know, um, the we try the this is silver star in whiskey, and I also love the honey one too. Like for me, I'm not oh, a whiskey gosh. drinker, but like yeah. really, like even the ladies in doesn't drink or you know, um, you can enjoy it with the ice and the honey taste, and it's so good. I am hundred percent. I'm not a whiskey. I'm not drink whiskey, but I just try it today. Right. Oh, it is good. And you don't want to mix anything. 
You don't want to mix anything. You just just zip it a little bit and I enjoy so. it. Mm -hmm. You know, well, I will tell you, and, and uh, I, I, I see the label up on the screen. So it's now a bright yellow label and it's got a honeycomb background. It's the same wonderful product. You know, I, I, I got to tell you, if I may take a moment, is I was never a fan of flavored whiskeys. When it first came out, I got a little nervous. Uh, <laughs> I was hoping that they weren't going to get into the whip flavors and the, the Fruit Loop flavored whiskeys. But, uh, <laughs> you know, you have to give Fireball a lot of credit. They created a brand that a lot of people consume and enjoy. And uh, the one thing I did like about it as a senior in the industry is that at least the younger generation that were drinking Fireball, the word whiskey was at least on their vocabulary, right? Mm -hmm. So right. instead of them drinking Jaeger, uh, you know, and Tawak and brands like that, they, they, you know, they'd wake up the next day and say, oh, we drank Fireball whiskey. So as a whiskey guy that took, you know, it was great to hear the word whiskey on their, on their lips. And then if you would have asked me to bet you or invest one dollar in a peanut butter flavored whiskey, I would have thought you were crazy. <laughs> and however, you know, that's the next new hot thing. And you have to give those people a lot of credits, you know, a product called Screwball. But all in all, you know what? When I saw the Silver Star uh, honey, when I got on board, I did the same thing as, as you just did. And I sampled it. And I was absolutely blown away. Mm -hmm. uh, it's it truly is uh, the best analogy is that it's like biting into a honeycomb. It doesn't have any uh, add, uh, added sugars to it. Uh, a lot of our competitive honey whiskey products out there even say on their labels artificial flavored and colored. And this is all true natural Texas wildflower honey that's in that bottle. Wow. And, uh, and that is 70 proof. So that would be one of the reasons it would be a little easier, right, uh, to consume. But that's great over ice or maybe with Topa Chica or maybe even club soda. But uh, here in Texas, people mix it with iced tea. It's a iced very tea. versatile product. So. Wow, I never know iced tea? That this sounds good. Icy. good. Oh. So I'm a Georgia boy by heart. I was born and raised in the South. So when you say tea, okay. that means there's including at least two pounds of sugar. <laughs> tea. Right, right. <laughs> You're right. Yeah. Otherwise, it's not tea. Right. It's just something that it's needs sugar. But man. I do think I do think so. I do think sweet tea is sweeter in, in Georgia, if that's at all possible. I guess uh, it is. I did. I did notice that in my travels through there. That is 100%. If you need contacts in Georgia, I got the hookup down there, bro. I got, okay. I got every, whatever you need down there. <laughs> I, I so, so one thing I wanted to do, Bob, is I wanted to show them very briefly. I'm going to walk them to your website so they can see it. So if you guys are, are okay. digging the episode so far, I'm going to put the website on here. I love that they're very responsible. It says click here if you're over 21. As we always say here on Drinking for Dummies, we're, we're not about getting drunk. It's not, this is not a show about getting hammered. It's about how to enjoy beverages yes. responsibly. And so if you go to their website, which I have it on the screen right now, you can see their entire story. And it talks about everything about the company from their very oh, humble beginnings, from the ranch style beans. And uh, I don't know who built your website, but they did a phenomenal job. So you can see that. You can also see all the spirits that are available there. And here's yes. one thing I would tell each and every one of you that are listening to the show. It says right here, book a tour. You can actually get a tour and go nice. tour the facility. When I went there, I didn't know what to expect. I did not know, by the mm -hmm. way, they had ghosts in the building. So now I will, I will be, I'll be have my radar up better next time when we come back. But you will see the rainwater collection. You will see how they do that, and then they have these massive stills that are in, involved in Love the in the building that. as well. And I have a picture I'm showing on the screen now, Bob, that shows the actual case. Uh, are they called barrel the barrel room? Yes. And so yes. It, it shows. Yes, that's our barrel. Room. Yeah, yes. and so I, I remember walking through that. And then they even have a really cool bottle locator so you can actually find if you're interested in going to go buy and uh, some really this cool recipes. This is only the goddess, uh, not the goddess, I'm sorry. This is only four words. Even that, yes. you can see those kind of nice factory and how they made it. This is a really great to go tour. And it's my understanding too, they can even book an event at the distillery too if they wanted to have like a, oh. a party or a wedding or something like that. Nice. Absolutely. We have uh, contacts on our website, but yes, uh, we, we've done weddings there. We, we've had the political party celebrations there. We've had uh, uh, bachelor parties. Yes, the, the place is available and uh, you can find that info online. Uh, one thing on there, and I don't think you mentioned or you may have, is we are now available online. 
So, uh, you know, people are anxious to try our products across the country. And uh, because of the uh, pandemic, it's been hard to get into all these other markets across the U.S. Right. So there is a, a buy now button on there. And uh, so people from, uh, you know, back east, northwest, uh, you know, Florida, people are looking for a product, they can go ahead and buy it online. So that's nice. But I'm going to tell you, man, uh, if you ha if you live within driving distance of Fort Worth, Texas, it is well worth the time to get in your car and travel down there. For one, you're walking into a, a near 100 year old building. So the nostalgia just of that alone, when you get in there and you see these massive stills, man, uh, and I, when I think I was there actually when they were doing a bottling uh, while we were doing the tour. It was really, really phenomenal. The staff there were amazing. And I just love the good old old uh, Fort Worth, Texas feel when you're in there. There's no mistake of mm -hmm. what part of the country you're in when you walk through those doors. You're right. You're right. We're very proud. We're very humbled and we're very happy to be have our home in Fort Worth. Well, Fort Worth is where the West begins. And uh, to your point, sounds like you've traveled quite a bit. I don't think you'll meet anybody friendlier than somebody from Fort Worth, Texas. And uh, getting a little partial there, but uh, I, I really mean that. There's, uh, they, they, you know, they, they they help their brothers, and they're very, very courteous to the many the many tourists we get that come through. Mm -hmm. so. I can tell you, Bob, when we moved to Texas, it was just kind of funny because um, ha having been married to Chica, by the way, uh, next month we'll have we'll celebrate our twentieth uh, wedding anniversary. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we've certainly defied the odds. Thank you, sir. But uh, but I'm going to yes. tell you, when we moved to Texas and we were just, you know, living and we were in the Fort Worth area and she one day we were just driving. Okay. She goes, babe, she goes, I finally feel like I'm in America. I'm like, what are you talking about? You've been living oh, in America for awesome. like for over 20 years. You've been living in America, the country. Yeah. She goes, no, 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 no. When I was in Japan, I had a vision of what America would be like with friendly people and, uh, and old, old traditions. And I'm finally here. Yes, sir. And yes, ma'am. Yeah. <laughs> Not many people say that anymore. So I and, love you. And here. I'm going to tell you, that's, that is a, a Texas uh, thing. And it's a real thing. And so you'll experience yeah. that on, on, in steroids. That's a wonderful. That's a wonderful comment. So, yes. No, that's a wonderful comment. And, and I got to tell you. You know, being a, you know, I still have an accent to many people, and uh, you know, people ask if I had a problem when I moved here in the '80s, and I, you know, people just embraced you, you know, and uh, you know, I, I do think that they ask that you leave your politics where where they are, but they do embrace you uh, when you get here, and uh, they really, really are wonderful people, and family matters, outdoor matters, mm -hmm. it's, just, it's just a wonderful state to live in, so. Well, hey, Bob, I can't thank you enough for being here. Uh, obviously, offline, we're going to get con connected and we'll talk about doing our episode on location in the distillery. I think that's a great idea. Hey, for you, okay. the listener, would you like to see a live tour of the distillery that we could maybe post on our YouTube channel? Would oh, you be interested in that kind of idea. thing? Mm -hmm. And so maybe oh, we, would, we could talk about it. I would do a tasting or something right online, do a virtual tasting. Oh, yeah. We're... And I wanted to try the vodka because all the women's Probably ninety percent of the time is if they drink in a vodka with a mix of something else. Right. So, yes, I definitely wanted to try that too. Well, hey Bob, listen, man, uh, we're, yeah, we're we we're, can we can arrange that. Yeah, we will certainly set it up. Thank you so much for your time. I realize it's a thank Sunday you. evening. You probably have more important things to do than be spending time with us. But I can't thank you enough, my friend. And I will certainly be meeting with you in the near future. Awesome. We appreciate the invite. You have a wonderful evening. All right. Thanks so much. Hey guys. Well, hey, listen. Uh, we are wrapping up our Fort Worth edition of Drinking for Dummies. Here's what I'm going I'm to dare you to do. And um, you'll thank me later. I want you to book a tour at Silver Star Distillery in Fort Worth, Texas. And go, go to your local, your local liquor store. They're all over Texas. Like, it, like Bob mentioned, they're in multiple states. Or even you can buy online if we're not in your state. Or, so certainly go to their website. Check it out. Purchase yourself a bottle. You will thank me later. Miss Griffin, do you have any final words? Uh, I think I wanted to try the vodka, but also he was made sure about the bourbon and bourbon, bourbon, and then having straight. And then some people they love to have the cigar to enjoy. I don't smoke cigar, but mm. it it just different. It's very rich, but then the price is a great price. And I don't drink whiskey, but this is the one you will love this. So you you definitely. Try it. I mean, you can buy anywhere in a liquor store, right? Yeah, you can mm -hmm. find them all over Texas. 
and in a few other states. Uh, you can find their bottle locator on their website. Go to their website, check it out. Just do a, a Google search or Silver Star Distillery. It'll pop up very easily. Find the website, go right there. Tons of content there. You're going to love it. And, and I'm going to put into the link later. So Actually, you can just click it. Better yeah. yet. She's mm -hmm. going to put a link below the video so you can just click right on it. Thank you so much for your time and attention. We're going to have you. another awesome beverage we're going to be hosting for you next week. So make sure you tune in. Make sure you like and subscribe to the show. Phoning us, please. Please follow us. We need more followers. Need more. That would be you. Mm -hmm. Click the like button or I'll come find you where you live. Not really. I'm kidding. God bless each and every one of you. Drink responsibly. That's the most important thing. Do and be drink. nice. Okay. Be nice to each other. Life's hard enough without us being mean. Take care. We'll see you next week.